Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Come Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I'd like to mention my Christian Suspense book series titled Never As It Seems. The first book in the series is available on Amazon and you can read it on any device on the Kindle app for free. Not only that, but I have another book series, which is the Juliet Clark book series, which is about a Haitian American teen sleuth who happens to be a successful true crime YouTuber. The first book in the series is titled Murder at Heart, and the links will be in the description box below if you are interested. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved murder of Georgia Lee, but actually known as Leah, and I'll explain that later on, but her name is georgia moses as i researched this case i saw that it was truly heartbreaking what's even more devastating is that this case isn't really well known and georgia had gone through a lot in life and it's really sad and very unfortunate that her life was brutally taken in death and i don't understand why her murder hasn't been solved yet now i encourage you all to do your own research with this case and not to just look at my video for all of the information here we go georgia lee aka leah moses was born on january 7th in 1985 in i hope i'm saying this right petaluma california to an ida moses i'm not sure who georgia's father is i couldn't really find that information anywhere but um, <clears throat> Georgia's mother did have a boyfriend named Ed Pope. I know that Georgia also had an older brother, but I really couldn't find his name either. But I do know that Georgia has a younger sister named Angel. At an early age, Georgia really didn't have an easy life. Um, since her mother Ida was sick, she was suffering from mental illness. Ida gave her daughters up to the foster care system but each time the girls were always given back, even though Ida gave them up, knowing that she couldn't take care of her kids. But you know, the foster care system was really screwed up then, and sadly, it is still very screwed up now. Now, Georgia was really loyal to her family. She did help take care of her mother and really stepped up to be a very responsible older sister to her younger sister, Angel when their mother was unable to take care of them both. And you know, that's really a huge responsibility for a 12 year old to take on. Like I know 12 year olds in my life and I truly can't imagine them truly being like the rock and the stability of their entire family. But Georgia was ready to take on this task. She was ready to help out her family the best that she could. And to me, that truly shows a great amount of strength for someone who is so young. So I did further research after recording this video and I felt like this was vital information that you all should know. At first, I just thought that Georgia was providing basic needs like combing hair and cooking for her mother and sister. What I didn't know was that this 12 year old girl, this child was actually paying the bills since you know her mother was mentally and physically unable to. Like, I don't know exactly how she earned this money um i'm not sure if the you know the way she got this money was legal which was no fault of her own like she was a child but from what i gathered i believe some grooming was involved but since i'm not 100 percent sure about the information i won't share any more thoughts on it since so much mis misinformation has been given over the years with this case Georgia was described as an old soul and of course she was somebody who was caring and she even was somebody who stood up against bullies at school and of course she was also known to be very responsible. So in 1997 at the age of 12, Georgia wasn't living with her mother and stayed at a friend's house since she was kicked out of the house by her mother's boyfriend, Ed, but she was allowed to come by the house every day to always make sure to check on her family. On August 13th, 1997, Georgia spent time with her sister, Angel, and was about to leave. Angel asked her older sister if she could come with her, 
but Georgia said that she couldn't and promised to come back. Now, sadly, this was a promise that Georgia was unable to keep. Later that day, Georgia was hanging out with a friend and she received a page from her pager and she paged them back. Now, for those of you who are watching this video who don't remember pagers or have no idea what a pager is, I mean, as for me, I mean, I'm 24 right now. I was really young when people pretty much stopped using them, but it was basically how people texted each other, if that's the best way I can explain it. It's basically how people texted one another back in the day since smartphones weren't a thing in the 90s. After the pager was sent, Georgia's friend walked her to a gas station, and this friend mentioned that Georgia left with some unknown guy, and this would be the last time Georgia would be seen alive. And it had been eight days, and Angel hadn't heard back from her sister. And even at seven years old, like Angel knew that her sister wouldn't just drop off and leave like this. Okay, once again, you know, it's been eight days since this 12-year-old girl is missing. She wasn't living with her mother, Ida, and of course, you know, Ida, Georgia, and Angel's mother is not in the right mind, and I assume Ed wasn't really concerned about Georgia since he was the one who kicked her out. So at seven years old, when CPS showed up to discuss Ed, who was a sex offender, and once again, Ida was not in the right state of mind, and... That I just know that that could, you know, having him in the house, especially with two daughters, is just very problematic. But I, Angel can go ahead and speak about her family life for herself. I'm not going to go ahead and speak on it. But um, from what I gathered, Angel, when CPS arrived, from what I believe, Angel had to be the one to report her sister missing while she had the opportunity. That day, on August 22nd, 1997, a highway worker was working to fix a broken guard well on Highway 101, but um, they did discover something very um, traumatic and something very disturbing. They discovered a girl's body in bushes, I believe, or like some type of like tree type thing, but um, you know, overall, they found the girl's body near Highway 101, and sadly, it was Georgia Leah Moses, and the cause of death was strangulation. Because of how terrible the body was decomposed, it was there was no other way to identify her other than through the dental records. And of course, Angel, she adored her older sister, Georgia, and she was devastated of her sister's death. And Georgia, she was loved by plenty of people. Her friends at school were devastated as well, and they did her best, they did their best to keep her memory alive in the school, like posting pictures in the school. But for some odd reason, the school asked them to take them down because she wasn't an active member of the school council. I mean, which truly makes no sense. Like this is a former student who you know, she, this was a former student of yours, and she died a brutal death, yet you don't want there to be some sort of memorial that makes no sense to me. And, I mean, I don't know, like, like the school, I guess the school kind of had a problem with Georgia, because if I didn't mention before, Georgia was unable to attend school on a regular basis because she had to, she took on the responsibility of taking care of her mother and her sister. So anybody with common sense would actually be able to see that this school literally sucks. Like, you know that Georgia literally could not attend school to take care of her family, but school didn't do anything about it. And not only did they forbid the students from posting pictures in the school, they even forbade students from talking about Georgia in the school. And as somebody who is an adult, I truly can't comprehend that. From what I understand, there wasn't really a funeral ceremony. It wouldn't be until a year later, until Georgia was buried, which I don't understand. Maybe y'all do, so leave it in the comment section if you know why it had to take a year for her body to be buried. So it's so tragic that Georgia's family couldn't officially say goodbye to her. So I was shocked to find out that there was a second funeral. So the first 
supposed funeral was actually in 1997 where Ida and Angel were present, but neither of them knew that Georgia wasn't buried until years later. There was a second funeral in 1998 since her body was released and it's just shocking to know that Ida and Angel had no idea about it until years later and that just truly breaks my heart to hear because again you know they had a chance to actually say goodbye but nobody informed them about this funeral and my prayers truly go out to this family because there just seemed to be so much more pain after mourning George's death. This isn't really the only sketchy thing that the police department has done. So earlier on this year it was discovered that her middle name, her legal middle name wasn't even Lee. It was actually Leah and this was a shock to her sister Angel and of course, you know, Angel was very upset about this because, you know, she spent pretty much decades trying, you know, to raise awareness for her, you know, to find out who killed her sister, but the police department didn't even release the correct middle name. And I just, I truly can't imagine the pain that Angel and even the rest of the family went through after finding this shocking information. And sometime after Georgia's death, Angel and Ida moved to Georgia to live with Ida's sister. Now, there was a sketch of the last man that Georgia was seen with, but to this day, that sketch has been unidentified. But throughout the years, there have been a couple of person of interest. There was one man who could have been the man in the sketch. They said that there was like some similarities and there was another one who was looked into because of how close they were to the area that Georgia was found, but there was no follow-up with either of these persons of interest. Angel, when she grew up, she joined the military and eventually had a family of her own. And to this day, like I mentioned before, she is trying to fight so hard to get justice for her sister. And I assume, I hope that she is a born again Christian because I've been looking at videos of her talking about Georgia and it seems like she is truly relying on God to help bring Georgia justice and i'm also amazed by angel's endurance to fight to see this case get closed if georgia were alive today she would be 36 years old right now and in august next month it will be exactly 24 years since she was taken away from her loved ones and like i was born in january of 1997 so i can't imagine the pain that her family had gone through mourning Georgia for this long and not getting the answers as to why she was stolen from them. Like finding out about this case truly makes me wonder how many stories like Georgia is out there. The God that I've served, the God of the Bible is a God of justice and he will make sure that justice is served. I thank you all for watching this video and if you did like this video please feel free to hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on this case, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more videos from me, feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video. If there's a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and let me know. I will see y'all for the next True Crime Tuesdays and I will talk to y'all later.